The Dark Bible. Sex, obscenities, filth biblical pornography. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms, in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she doted upon their paramours, whose flesh is, as the flesh of asses, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Ezekiel 23, 19-21 and lusted after her paramours there, whose members were like those of donkeys, and whose emission was like that of stallions. Ezekiel 23, 21 in RSV. Comment. The story of the sister horse, Atalah and Ahalabah gives a moral lesson against the sins of the flesh. But why does God have to describe their adventures in such pornographic detail? Does God love porn? What parent would want their children reading verse 21 about comparing the size of men's penises to donkey genitals and the sperm flow to that of horse issues? As any adult religious parent might believe, such lustful descriptions, if culled from secular sources, would corrupt children should they happen to read them. Should it not also corrupt children, if read from the Bible? Cain's wife? And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch, and he builded a city, and called the name of the city, after the name of his son, Enoch. Genesis 4:17. Comment. What wife? At that time only Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel existed on the earth. The only possibility comes from, either a grave omission from the Bible, or his mother Eve served as his wife. The second possibility would mean incest. After Cain killed his brother, God protected him by setting a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Verse 14. Considering the earth supposedly had only Adam's family, who should kill him? And what kind of mark could have protected Cain? From the absurdity of this story, it should not surprise why anyone would read into it what they wanted. Certain inane beliefs resulted such as the common belief that the mark of Cain meant the dark skin of the Negro race. David uncovers himself. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting, and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Mitchell Saul's daughter looked through a window, and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. 2 Samuel 6 14 16 Then David returned to bless his household. And Mitchell the daughter of Saul came out to meet David, and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. 2 Samuel 6.20 Comment. Imagine King David dancing and leaping with all his might, while uncovering himself to the crowd. David's wife, in effect, says, Well, you certainly made an ass of yourself at the temple today leaping and dancing about like an idiot and exposing yourself. Note, an ephod describes an embroidered robe that looks similar to a woman's dress. Death to adulterers. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. And the man that leaf with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness, both of them shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus 20 colon 10 11. Comment. Few Christians today consider death as a punishment for adultery, no doubt, because so many Christians, themselves, practice sexual liaisons with other people's spouses. Note, however, that a growing number of heterosexual fundamentalists have begun to call for the death penalty for homosexuals simply, because Leviticus 2013 calls for the death of a man who lies with mankind, homosexuality. Drugs and aphrodisiacs. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field, let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards, let us see, if the vine flourish, whether the tender grape appear, and the pomegranates bud forth, there will I give thee my loves. The mandrakes give a smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O my beloved. Song of Solomon 7 colon 11 13. Comment. The poetry of the Songs of Solomon gives scriptural testimony for love, sex and the beauty of the female body, a rare and usually ignored portion of the Bible by many fundamentalist Christians. 
The mandrakes mentioned here describe a Mediterranean herb of the nightshade family of plants. To this day in the Middle East, people believe it overcomes impotence in men and acts as a powerful aphrodisiac. Even the roots have a decidedly phallic appearance. Ancient physician, Galen, wrote that pomegranate possessed antifertility properties. Many women in ancient days used pomegranate, as well as other plants, for birth control, with little interference from religious or political authorities. Studies in the 1930s showed that pomegranate reduced fertility in laboratory animals, much as modern contraceptive pills do. Left square bracket archaeology, March slash April 1994 right square bracket. See also Genesis 3014. Eat human feces. And thou shalt eat it, as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with none that cometh out of man, in their sight. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. Ezekiel 4 colon 12 13. Comment. Holy shit cakes, Batman. How many good Christians today realize that their God has coprophilic tendencies? One wonders what nutritional or moral value it would serve the people to eat human feces with their bread, as God ordered. God here has also ordered the voyeuristic operation without explanation. Although in verses 14 to 15 the poor Israelites complain about eating abominable flesh, God, in his wonderful grace, changes his mind and allows them to substitute human feces with cow feces. Gee, thanks a lot God. As if eating cow excrement makes much of a difference. You'd think the creator of the entire universe might have given his chosen ones a souffle or a bagel or something. Please, anything better than shit cakes. One might also wonder, how can an all-knowing and perfect God, but a scat God nevertheless, change his mind? Left square bracket note, some have tried to interpret dying, as fuel here but nothing in those verses relate to anything at all about fuel and it specifically says to bake it with dying. Moreover the verses speak of defiled bread and abominable flesh which obliterates the fuel theory. During biblical times barley served as a poor man's staple. They also fed their cattle barley, which may explain the adding of dung, with its indigested barley, to the cake to increase the barley content right square bracket.